We've set a challenge for two maths teachers from Framwell Gate School in Durham. They're being summoned to a mystery location. Right now, neither teacher knows their destination or the topic they'll be teaching. Their lesson needs to be ready by 2 p.m. this afternoon. It's the unknown, isn't it? It's the unknown side of things. It's exciting, you know, it's a wee bit scary. Yeah. Yeah. They're on their way to the Baltic Art Centre in Newcastle and they're about to meet contemporary artist James Johnson Perkins. And really, I just want to get them to be as inspired as they can to make things, you know, how, how can they do it, you know, and make things that are bigger than themselves as well. This is nice, isn't it? The challenge for the teachers is to create a cross-curricular maths lesson using applied art. What I would like you to Dr. Elaine Fisher is assistant head teacher at Framwell Gate, and she's been teaching maths for eight years. You kind of get used to the setup of your classroom and how things will work. So the idea that we're going to be doing it in a totally different environment will be really interesting to see the effect that it has on the type of thinking that we do in terms of our planning, but also the, the way the students respond as well. Her colleague, NQT Rosalyn Taylor, has a background in engineering and has been teaching maths for a year. The creative side is probably where my strengths lie, um, sort of thinking up different ideas, and Elaine's quite good at sort of keeping me, keeping me down and then like, saying, OK, let's see how we can actually put that into a lesson. Awaiting them on the roof of the Baltic is a box of three specially chosen resources. These are the vital components of their lesson. Ready? Uh -huh. Random weights and some rules about bridges. It's 8.30 a.m. and our two maths teachers are speeding their way out of their comfort zone. I hope it's algebra. Yeah. Or Al number. Albert, algebra's nice because you can link it yeah, to so, so much different stuff. The quayside surroundings of the Baltic and the box of resources should provide them with enough inspiration for their lesson. Let's hope so, because by 2 p.m. this afternoon, they'll need to be ready to teach a class of Year 8 pupils. I think a lot of people don't really like maths. I just can't do it. Not very good at it. Certain things I don't really like about maths. Just like I don't understand some things, but then it's a challenge, so you can work on it. In maths, you just need like a, um, like a practical side to work stuff out. I don't like the idea of doing shape stuff. Shape stuff, shape stuff's harder. I think I think that's it's more constrained. I think. Yeah. Right. Are we close? Right. I have no idea. That's the trouble. I don't even know where anywhere is around you here. You don't know Newcastle, though, do I don't you? Know Newcastle Whereas at, all. at least I know Newcastle. We go out. Right, where are we going then? You're, you're, you're local. <laughs> no. Oh, it's, it's the Baltic. Huh? That's the Baltic way. Where? where? I think that big building coming up there. What building? This one on left. Wow. What's the Baltic? Have you beat? <laughs> It's, it's an art, a contemporary art gallery. An but art it's gallery. like really modern. It's got an amazing view out down there, down that way, so you can see all the bridges and down right down the Tyne. I want something we know something about. Well, that's all right. I don't know anything about art. <laughs> <laughs> Art's not one of my strengths. I can paint, but I don't know anything about art. Oh dear. No review. Yeah, the bridge is really cool. I really like the Millennium Bridge in particular. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Uh, I'm James Johnson Perkins and I'm nice a freelance you. artist oh, here, at, here at the Baltic Gallery. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Here we've got a box mm -hmm. and here's the key. And inside the box, there's, there's, there's <laughs> objects that you can use to inspire you for this lesson that you're going to be doing. So open the box. You can open the box. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Ready? Uh-huh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, sequences and bridge lines. Oh. Let's see what happens to it. Thank you. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> cool, that's really random. <laughs> Oh, they use it to take over the bridges, don't they? And some oh, weight. It's a bucket as well. Wow. <laughs> okay. Is there something else? Oh, look, there is. Oh, oh it's a... Watch, Watch me! It's <laughs> like Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Excellent. Well, the bridges is good. 
sequences, patterns, different bridges. We've got bridges here. Although I find the coal really random. <laughs> I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think it's the coal. But the others, well, even the weights to a certain extent. This but I can mean, see in the surroundings. I mean, there's lovely al algebra is what we wanted, right? We yeah. love algebra. Yeah. Um, so that's and the good. pattern and sequences, the bridges. The weights, I can see a, I can see a link there. Weights and bridges. Yeah, I can see, I can yeah. see links there. Strength. Definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now that I, I actually, like knowing. I no, no, know what it is. Like yeah. my, my brain, I feel my brain's already working. Need to find out. This is going to tell us what actual topic is. Yeah, it? but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with so far. Right, so we're going to watch the DVD and then we've got a couple more surprises for you downstairs. More what? surprises. <laughs> okay. okay. DVD. Let's go. <laughs> the objects in the box have been specially chosen by two experts. First up. Adam Goldwater from the Discovery Museum in Newcastle. He has some tips on how they might use the coal and weighing scales in their lesson. The objects that I've chosen for the students to use are a bucket of coal and some scales. Coal, black gold, is really the foundation of the prosperity of Tyneside, uh, the Tyne, Newcastle, Gateshead and the region. The challenge of getting coal quickly and efficiently from the coal face to export from the River Tyne is really seen all around us in the bridge designs, yeah, uh, the railways, yeah. uh, the staves that we use to uh, load the coal onto the ships. So the maths uh, could be brought in to examine the real life context of uh, the bridge designs that were subsequently built to allow the greater ships through. That would be nice wouldn't it, to have something that has a cross curricular link with the kind of history yeah, as well. Because that's something, yeah, that you know, my passion. <laughs> you exactly. your engineer. Engineer in the history. Research. What more do we need? Yeah. Artist. <laughs> and the artist, of course. Right. The second object we have here is a set of uh, scales and measures. The teachers could use these as an activity to measure out how much coal could possibly be loaded onto, um, first of all, the small keel boats and then larger and larger ships. Bearing in mind that coal itself doesn't come in, in a uniform shape or size, uh, putting it into a real life context and, and a context that would have had to have been uh, considered in the past. I was quite surprised by the coal, but then obviously like when me and Elaine started talking afterwards, like yeah, obviously linking to the sort of the mining history, I thought yeah, it makes sense. I mean for me, my background's in history and maths, so the kind of links between that, I really like the opportunity to kind of link the two subjects together. The equation B equals 2J minus 3, showing the relationship between joints and beams, has been placed in the box by Steve Humble from the National Centre for Excellence in the Teaching of Mathematics. He's also got some tips on how they could use the space around the Baltic in a lesson. An interesting thing from a mathematical point of view is that this space, the, the, the river is the same width across, but different engineers have used different techniques to span that space. So I think it would be quite interesting to get the students to try and look at the different curves across the river and see whether those are the same shape curves for the different bridges. Yeah, because scale, scale factors. Scale, proportion, it's kind of, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, that's going to be kind angles. of ratio. Yeah, angles, yeah. So using this formula would be a good place to start because what it will do is it will give the students uh, an idea of how many joints and beams they need to construct their bridges if they build them with this type of construction. In some ways that was much more the comfort zone because you get the board with mathematical information, a sequence, you think, oh, I can do that because that's maths, that, that I'm happy with that. At that point you've got everything open to you, you've got safe routes, you've got more adventurous routes, you've got totally wacky routes and it's kind of up to you to kind of say, right, well, I'm going to take it and go down this sort of angle or whatever. James has one more surprise left for them. He's giving them a much bigger classroom than they're used to. So, this is the space that you're going to be working in. Wow, that's quite, uh, <laughs> quite big. Impressive space. It's very really blank. You've got very simple materials to work with. You be thinking about things like structure, you know, maybe things like that too, a little curve. I sort of have a quite a good knowledge of maths. Really, I'm a maker, I make things. I'm interested in you know, the process of uh, 
putting things together and, and really I just want to get them to think, make, be as inspired as they can to make things, you know, how, how can they do it, you know, and make things that are bigger than themselves as well, this is nice, isn't it? Something like that. I've actually taught maths in school, so I've got quite a sort of maths brain. In fact, I won the maths prize when I was at school. <laughs> but how you do that and how you use these materials to, to work out a mathematical maths lesson is up to you. But we would like you to use all of this space. Okay. Whatever you're making, it's going to fill the space. Wow. I think it's great, isn't it? I think it's, yeah, I like the idea of having loads of space to spread about and kind of, especially with it being like quite practical based. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I love the view. I think the, the idea of teaching in a room, a space like this, where you've got the view out there to kind of keep them inspired with the kind of topic and the bridges yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, and, and linking that into what they're actually doing yeah, and hopefully definitely. seeing the whole real life context thing is really good. Now they've got all the ingredients and with their year eight pupils arriving shortly, it's time to start planning. I can appreciate and enjoy art. I've never particularly had a great strength in doing anything terribly artistic and I think that you kind of, outside your comfort zone, you perhaps panic a little bit. It was, it was all really appealing to me and the whole idea of filling that space was a challenge. It was like, okay, we've got all this massive space. And I mean, yeah, it's a little bit daunting because it's a massive room. Um, and you think, okay, you know, we've only got an hour for a lesson, we've got to fill the space in an hour. Yes, that's, you know, that's quite scary. This could do a bit of a sort of brainstorm yeah, thing, first of all. Let's put bridges in the middle, shall we? Yeah, we've, we've also got, got the coal. We've got the coal. Scales. Scales. We've got outcomes, haven't we? Outcomes. outcomes. They need to. They need to build a structure. They need to, yeah, there needs to be a structure built. 